What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Hope that you're having a beautiful day, a fantastic one. Thank you for being here. You, you, and yes, even you. I appreciate you guys showing up, stopping by, coming on in. Let's go ahead and listen to All Along the Watchtower, Jimi Hendrix, his cover of Bob Dylan's original, which I literally just listened to. And so we're following up with this version uh, in our near, near ending of Electric Ladyland. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the album listen of this one as well, by the way. I had wanted to get into a little bit more Jimi Hendrix, and uh, this, was, this was the opportune album, the opportune time to do so. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, we, ha we have one more song after this, uh, <laughs> but we're almost done. Uh, so like I said, we just listened to Bob Dylan's original, which I have not heard. Uh, now we're listening to, of course, the cover by Jimi Hendrix, which I have heard most of it. I honestly don't remember all of it. This is one of those tracks that's been used in like every war movie for, from like, I don't know, probably the 70s forward. Like, right? This this is one of those songs. There's certain tracks that have been embedded in like war movies, especially like Vietnam uh, war movies. And this is just this is just another one of those. Um, for all I, I don't remember, but for all I know, it could have also been an apocalypse now, which by the way, we watched over on my Just JP Plus movie channel, link down below if you want to watch that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we're going to go ahead and move on to this one, see how it compares to Bob Dylan's original. We'll talk about that and um, go from there. That's it. <laughs> Let's get into it. All along the watchtower, Jimi Hendrix. Bada ba Much confusion. What a perfect example of how to do a cover, how to cover an original, take it, bake it, put it in your own personal oven, take it out, ooh, it's hot, grab a glove. Put it on the pan, let it cool, partake, enjoy. This is how you do a cover of a song. This is how you do it. Pay homage to the original, but put your own spin on it. And obviously with Jimi Hendrix, how is he going to spin it? <laughs> spin it. The switch from harmonica from Bob Dylan's original to the guitar may seem like the obvious choice, but when you hear it, it's like, God, what he did with the song is just incredible. The intensity that I mentioned from the harmonica in the original, I think is a bit underrated because there is a certain kind of intensity with the way that Dylan actually plays the harmonica in that track specifically. Here, Jimmy does a similar thing because he plays the guitar with such dramatic intensity, with such fire, with such heat, with such personality and emotion. Like, you know that it's Jimi Hendrix playing the guitar. He makes this guitar do things, and, and he makes it do, do things, yeah, that I, I, would, I would imagine have not been done before, and probably have not been done since. Many imitators, but nothing like the original. So the switch out from the harmonica uh, in between those verses switching now to the guitar in between those verses, once again, may seem like the obvious choice, but the way that Jimmy plays inside of that is just, to me, it's just fiery. I can't think of any other word to describe it. It's just burning with intense passion. And in a different way, Jimmy tells the story the same, but just with a slightly more dramatic flair to it. Uh, when we go back to the, the lyrics, and I mentioned before on the Bob Dylan uh, video, how the lyrics kind of leave you with this, a little bit of an ominous trailing at the end for the band to come in and, and really just let it rip. You know, for example, the very last verse, talking about the writers approaching um, and the wind howling. Like, something's coming, but you don't know what. But the band, they bring it. And they tell you not what it is, but how it is. Because they're not telling you what it is. Literally, there's no... As far as I can tell, <laughs> there's no literal or like um, um, uh, a surface level meaning to the story. How is what it's about? How does it make you feel? How is it presented? How do you interpret it? This thing is 
this thing is deep. The drumming. The drumming was already intense, uh, like a quiet simmer on Dylan's original. But here, <laughs> it's just popping that much more. Uh, the final fill before the final solo. It's like, uh, it's like <laughs> when you get on a roller coaster. The only one I can think of over here in Orlando is at Islands of Adventure, the Hulk. Like you're just sitting there. It's like a roller coaster. You just sit there, but then all of a sudden it just like shoots you out. I don't know how fast it goes, but it's fast. It just makes me think of that. The fills here are just a, a launch pad into this fiery bliss. That's good. Uh, I think the lyrics are the same, but I, I, I gotta be honest, I wasn't hugely paying attention to the, to the lyrics this time, but I think that they're pretty much the same. There must be some kind of way out of here, said the Joker to the thief. Because every once in a while, and this is also a good example of a cover, I have to see if it's actually done here or not, um, but the lyrics are slightly altered, perhaps to give a, a new meaning to uh, their new remaker. There must be some kind of way out of here, said the Joker to the thief. There's too much confusion, I can't get no relief. Businessmen, they drink my wine, plum and dig my earth. None will level on the line. Nobody offered his word. So let me pull up Bob Dylan's original, and I'm just putting it uh, actually side by side so I can look at them. Uh, so there's a few slight changes. For example, none of them along my line from, D from Bob Dylan. None, of, none will level on the line. Nobody offered his word by... Uh, Hendrix. So there are some slight changes to it, but I don't think any changes that will um, allow you to perhaps mistake uh, the the original meanings. No reason to get excited. The thief he kindly spoke. There are many here among us, but feel or who feel that life is but a joke. But uh, you and I, we've been through that, and this is not our fate. So let's stop talking falsely now. The hour's getting late, um, and I believe even the last verse is pretty much the same. Uh, even though he adds just a little bit of more vocals to the ending when he says all along the watchtower. And obviously the song is a little bit longer. It's like about a minute and so seconds longer than the original. And that's just because of that guitar filled madness. Now, this came after Bob Dylan's version. Obviously, it's a cover. <laughs> I want to know what Bob Dylan thought. And I know we can find that. Uh, let's see if we can find that as we read some of these facts. It says that this was Hendrix's only top 40 hit in the U.S., where his influence far outpaced his popularity. That's actually an interesting, an interesting statement. His influence outpaced his popularity. He was already influencing other musicians and other bands before he was, get, before he was even like making perhaps mainstream popularity. Isn't that kind of crazy? That just shows like how far his, his reach went. Uh, says that uh, Hendrix said, all those people who don't like Bob Dylan's songs should read his lyrics. They are filled with the joys and sadness of life. I am as Dylan. None of us can sing normally. Sometimes I play Dylan's songs and they are so much like me that it never, that it seems to me that I wrote them. I have the feeling that Watchtower is a song I could have come up with, but I'm sure I never would have finished it. Thinking about Dylan, I often consider that I'd never be able to write the words he manages to come up with. But I'd like him to help me because I have loads of songs I can't finish. I just lay a few words on the paper and I just can't go forward. Now, but now things are getting better. I'm a bit more self-confident. Okay. Another important thing about performing a cover. And perhaps it's not a necessary thing, but it's a beautiful thing. Paying deep respect and reverence to the original artist. I don't know much about Dylan and Hendrix, but just from these words, it's really obvious that Hendrix was hugely influenced or at least feels some sort of inspiration and perhaps a deep camaraderie and connection to Dylan in some way, you know, like that deep spiritual, like when Dylan writes words, it's like he's writing to me. I feel like I could have wrote these words. So it's like Dylan is writing the same way I would write, but he's doing it better. Like that's what Jimmy's saying. And that's just a really beautiful way to kind of like pay homage. And, and once again, that kind of deep respect to uh, the original writer. I'm trying to find, trying to find what Bob Dylan thought. Cause he had to have heard um, Hendrick's version. Uh, duh, 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 they cut a large number of takes. Uh, impact of Hendrix recording on Dylan's performances. In 1995, that's quite a bit later, Dylan described his reaction to hearing Hendrix's version. 
It overwhelmed me, really. He had such talent, he could find things inside a song and vigorously develop them. He found things that other people wouldn't think of finding in there. He probably improved upon it by the spaces he was using. I took license with the song from his version, actually, and continue to do it to this day. Isn't this like the perfect, <laughs> not only the perfect cover and original, but just the perfect respect between two hugely influential artists? What Jimmy said about how Bob Dylan's original and his writing in general, like what it did for him, what it meant to him. And then Dylan taking that respect and throwing it right back in Hendrix's court and saying, I heard your cover and God, the way that you developed it, you found things in the spaces of the song and of the music that I, I couldn't think of. And you filled it with such magnitude and beauty. So much that he says that he, he performs it in a similar way now, or like in his versions. That is, that is, that is so crazy. From the first live performance, Dylan has consistently performed the song closer to Hendrix's version than his own original recording. That's influence and legacy, guys. That is, that is influence and legacy beyond belief. That is so awesome. I love, that's something that like, I love to read. I just love to read that kind of, that kind of love and respect between artists. It's something that isn't always common but when it happens i think that's beautiful that that is that's awesome uh so yeah let me know what you guys thought of this particular track jimmy hendrix version uh, of course if you're watching this one and you didn't watch my bob dylan uh one you can go back and watch that one as well if i remember i'll link it but sometimes i forget i'm just being honest sometimes I forget. <laughs> so, uh, but otherwise enjoy the rest of your day let me know your thoughts you can follow me on twitter on patreon like the video before you leave subscribe if you'd like you don't have to but it it helps and uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>